Money Matters. Page 27. Exercise C. Sound Bites. Read and listen to a conversation between two friends about saving money. Hey, a new entertainment system. What'd you do? Strike it rich? I wish. No, I saved up for it. There's no way I could do that. Too many bills. I know what you mean. My credit card bills used to be totally out of hand. Really? Then how'd you manage to save up all that cash? Well, I just decided it was time to start living within my means. I cut way back on my spending. Wasn't that hard? Kind of, but I'm glad I did it. Page 28, size A. Grammar Snapshot. Read and listen to the interview responses. Notice how future plans are expressed. What are your short-term and long-term financial goals? I've decided to set a long-term goal for myself, to put aside enough money to buy a new car. By this time next year, I'll have put away enough cash for a down payment. My short-term goal is to start living within my means. Once I've started sticking to a monthly budget, I think it'll be easy. I find it really helps me to try and picture where I want to be over the next few years. By next year, I hope to have gotten a good job as a financial consultant. That's my short-term goal. My long-term goal? I plan to have reached real financial independence before I retire. My college expenses are going to get me into a lot of debt, me into a lot of debt. I don't expect to have begun making payments by the time I graduate, but I do have a plan. After I finish school, my short-term goal is to find a job where I can make some good money and begin a payment plan on my loans. Then I figure that by the time I'm 30, I should have paid back everything I owe. My long-term goal is to have saved enough money to spend a year traveling. By the time I'm 40, I'm sure I'll have saved enough. After I've seen some of the world, I plan to settle down and buy a house. Page Exercise A. Conversation Snapshot. Read and listen. Notice the conversation strategies. Hey, I heard you got an eTech MP3 player. Lucky you. Well, to tell you the truth, I could kick myself. What do you mean? I had no idea it would be so hard to operate. It took me hours to figure out how to download a song. What a pain. You're telling me. Had I known, I would have gotten a different brand. Page 30 and intonation practice. Listen again to the conversation. Repeat in the pauses. Hey, I heard you got an eTech MP3 player. Lucky you. Well, to tell you the truth, I could kick myself. What do you mean? I had no idea it would be so hard to operate. It took me hours to figure out how to download a song. What a pain. You're telling me. Had I known, I would have gotten a different brand. Page 30, Eyes B. Vocabulary. Expressing buyer's remorse. Read and listen. It costs so much to maintain. It takes up so much room. It's so hard to operate. It's so hard to put together. It just sits around collecting dust. Now listen again and repeat in the pauses.
It costs so much to maintain. It takes up so much room. It's so hard to operate. It's so hard to put together. It just sits around collecting dust, collecting dust. Exercise C. Listening. Infer reasons. Listen to the conversations in which people regret having bought something. Complete each statement by inferring the reason for buyer's remorse. Conversation 1. Wow, what a great juicer. That's even big enough for my family. Actually, I hardly ever use it. It's way too big. I have such a small kitchen. So why'd you buy it? I got it on sale at a great price. Conversation 2. I see you bought a digital camera. How do you like it? Well, I might like it if I could figure out how to use it. Truth is, it's a pain in the neck. What do you mean? It has way too many features. <laughs> Believe me, if I had known you couldn't just point and shoot, I never would have gotten it. it. Conversation 3. Hey, I love your new exercise bike. It must be great having one of those. Well, yes and no. What does that mean? I like it, but I guess I'm just a couch potato. I just don't use it enough. Conversation 4. What a cool sound system. You just get it? Yeah. Look at all those pieces. When are you going to put it all together? Well, that's a problem, actually. There's so many components, and the instructions don't help at all. Look. Whoa, that looks pretty complicated. Had I known how complicated it was going to be, I would have gotten a different model. Conversation 5 Love your new car. You must be on cloud nine driving that thing. Oh, it's fun to drive, but I'm not so sure it's worth it. Really? Why? You wouldn't believe it. Between the premium gas and visits to the mechanic, it's costing me an arm and a leg. Ouch. I can't afford to drive it. I probably wouldn't have bought it had I'd given it more thought. Page 3. Exercise A. Listening. Listen for main ideas. Read the statements. Then listen to a radio call-in show and check true or false. Welcome back to Money Talks. I'm still your host, Laura Savino. We've got some listeners on the line with financial questions. Let's go to our first caller. Steve, you're on the air. Talk to me. Hi, Laura. I'm afraid I'm really having problems making ends meet. Tell me about it. I earn a good living, but it seems like no matter how much money I make, I can't seem to catch up. Believe me, you're not alone, Steve. Sometimes it feels that way. Let me ask you something. Do you put anything away for a rainy day? You mean savings? No way. There's never enough for that. Well, here's a tip for you, Steve. From now on, when you spend money throughout the day... Uh-huh. Don't, don't spend any of your change. When you get home every evening, put your loose change in a jar. You'll be surprised how much you'll have saved up, even in a few weeks. Wow. I never thought of doing that. And put that change you saved up in the bank. Say once a month, okay? Okay. I'll try that. Steve, what about debt? Are you maxing out on your credit cards? Well, yes, I do use credit cards, if that's what you mean. Do you pay your bills on time? I try to. Do you pay the minimum, or do you pay off the whole thing each time? Well, it kind of depends on how much it is. Well, are you drowning in credit card bills, or have they been fairly reasonable so far? Well, I guess I'd have to say I've been drowning in debt. Okay, Steve, here's what I want you to do. How many credit cards do you have? Maybe 10 or 12. Steve, that's a lot of cards. Decide which two you want to use regularly, okay? Okay. Take all the other cards and cut them up. Cut them up? 
You heard me. Cut them up. You can get along just fine with two credit cards. If you're using 10 or 12 credit cards, Steve, that tells me there's something wrong with this picture. You see what I mean? Well, I'm not sure. Steve, if you want to keep your head above water, you've got to live within your means. That means spending less than you're making, not more. Oh. Okay, Steve. Here's one other thing I'd like you to do. Yeah? Sit down and plan a budget for yourself. A budget? That's right. If you feel like your finances are out of control, then you need to take the bull by the horns and take control of your finances. You follow me? I think so. Sit down and make a list of all your regular expenses. Keep track of how much you're spending on everything, and I mean everything, okay? Try that for three months and see if it doesn't help you out. Okay, I'll give it a try. And Steve? Yeah? When you plan that budget, make sure you treat yourself to something nice once in a while, okay? Really? You bet. If your budget is nothing but don't spend, don't spend, it isn't going to work. You know what I mean? I hear you. Good luck, Steve. Next caller. You're on the air. Talk to me. Exercise B. Listening. Listen for details. Now listen again. What are the three tips Laura Savino gives the caller? Welcome back to Money Talks. I'm still your host, Laura Savino. We've got some listeners on the line with financial questions. Let's go to our first caller. Steve, you're on the air. Talk to me. Hi, Laura. I'm afraid I'm really having problems making ends meet. Tell me about it. I earn a good living, but it seems like no matter how much money I make, I can't seem to catch up. Believe me, you're not alone, Steve. Sometimes it feels that way. Let me ask you something. Do you put anything away for a rainy day? You mean savings? No way. There's never enough for that. Well, here's a tip for you, Steve. From now on, when you spend money throughout the day... Uh-huh. Don't spend any, of your spend any of your change. When you get home every evening, put your loose change in a jar. You'll be surprised how much you'll have saved up, even in a few weeks. Wow. I never thought of doing that. And put that change you saved up in the bank. Say once a month, okay? Okay. I'll try that. Steve, what about debt? Are you maxing out on your credit cards? Well, yes, I do use credit cards, if that's what you mean. Do you pay your bills on time? I try to. Do you pay the minimum, or do you pay off the whole thing each time? Well, it kind of depends on how much it is. Well, are you drowning in credit card bills, or have they been fairly reasonable so far? Well, I guess I'd have to say I've been drowning in debt. Okay, Steve. Here's what I want you to do. How many credit cards do you have? Maybe 10 or 12. Steve, that's a lot of cards. Decide which two you want to use regularly, okay? Okay. Take all the other cards and cut them up. Cut them up? You heard me. Cut them up. You can get along just fine with two credit cards. If you're using 10 or 12 credit cards, Steve, that tells me there's something wrong with this picture. You see what I mean? Well, I'm not sure. Steve, if you want to keep your head above water, you've got to live within your means. That means spending less than you're making, not more. Oh. Okay, Steve. Here's one other thing I'd like you to do. Yeah? Sit down and plan a budget for yourself. A budget? That's right. If you feel like your finances are out of control, then you need to take the bull by the horns and take control of your finances. You follow me? I think so. Sit down and make a list of all your regular expenses. Keep track of how much you're spending on everything, and I mean everything, okay? Try that for three months and see if it doesn't help you out. Okay, I'll give it a try. And Steve? Yeah? When you plan that budget, make sure you treat yourself to something nice once in a while, okay? Really? You bet. If your budget is nothing but don't spend, don't spend, it isn't going to work. You know what I mean? I hear you. Good luck, Steve. Next caller. You're on the air. Talk to me. Page 32, size D. Vocabulary. Describing spending habits. Read and listen. Nouns. A big spender. A spendthrift. A cheapskate. A tight wad.
Adjectives. Generous. Cheap. Stingy. Thrifty. Frugal. Now listen again and repeat in the pauses. A big spender. A spendthrift. A cheapskate. A tightwad. Ge generous. Cheap. Stingy. Thrifty. Frugal. Page 34. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Charity and investment. Read and listen. Charity. Contribution. Investment. Philanthropist. Profit. Now listen again and repeat in the pauses. Charity. Contribution. Investment. Philanthropist. Profit. Page 34. Size C. Reading. Read and listen to the article. What reasons does Paul Newman give for donating to charity? Paul Newman, actor and philanthropist. Actor Paul Newman began acting in 1954 and appeared in more than 50 films in his lifetime. He won an Oscar for Best Actor in 1986 for The Color of Money. In 1993, Newman received a special Oscar for Humanitarian Service. These two awards reflect his dual success as actor and philanthropist. In 1982, Newman and a friend, A. E. Hotchner, founded Newman's Own, a not-for-profit food products company. The company's first product was a salad dressing that Newman and Hotchner made at home themselves. Newman was told that the salad dressing would sell, would sell only if his face were on the label. Though he didn't want to call attention to himself, Newman agreed because he planned to donate all profits to charity. The salad dressing was a big success. In the first year, Newman contributed approximately one million U.S. dollars to charitable organizations. Newman's own expanded, and the company now makes many other food products. Every year, Newman donated 100% of the profits from the sale of Newman's own products to thousands of educational and charitable organizations. And since Paul Newman's death in 2008, Newman's Own Inc. continues this practice and has donated more than 295 million U.S. dollars to charities in the U.S. and 31 other countries around the world. One of Newman's special projects was the Hole in the Wall Gang Camps, the world's only network of camps for children with life-threatening illnesses. At these camps, children participate in many outdoor activities where they can temporarily forget their illnesses. Newman and other generous donors have sponsored over 100,000 children to attend these camps free of charge. When asked why he gave so much to children with illnesses, Newman said, I've had such a string of good fortune in my life, those who are most lucky should hold their hands out to those who aren't. Paul Newman didn't think that being philanthropic was an exceptional quality. To him, generosity was simply a human trait, a common-sense way of living. I respect generosity in people. I don't look at it as philanthropy. I see it as an investment in the community. I am not a professional philanthropist, said Newman. I'm not running for sainthood. I just happen to think that in life we need to be a little like the farmer who puts back into the soil what he takes out. 
Page Exercise A. Listening. Listen to the conversations about money matters. Then decide which statement best summarizes each conversation. Listen again if necessary. Conversation one. Didn't you tell me you bought a new computer table? Um. Yeah, I did. So where is it? Well, I hate to admit it, but I just can't figure out how to assemble it. You wouldn't believe how many pieces there are. So you're just gonna let it sit around in a box collecting dust? No, no. I'm gonna take it back to the store and get my money back. I shouldn't have bought it in the first place. Conversation two. Hey, you want to go out to dinner? Ah,、uh, I don't think so. I'm trying to save money. I just got a big raise. Come on, let's celebrate. I'm sorry, but I just don't have the cash right now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's on me. No, I couldn't let you pay for dinner. Forget about it. It's my pleasure. Thanks. That's really nice of you. Conversation three. Hey, a new flat-screen TV! It's fabulous. Thanks. I'm really happy with it. That must have been pretty expensive. How'd you manage? Well, I saved up for it. I put away a little bit every month. Wish I could do that. Everything's gone by the end of the month. I never can seem to save any money. Yeah, it can be tough. End of unit three. End of CD one.